Hello my friends, and welcome back to the You Can Do TV channel. The MWM TCG 2032 V16 stands as a pinnacle in the realm of gas-powered gensets, offering a harmonious blend of power, efficiency, and reliability. Designed to cater to the demanding needs of large independent power producers, IPP projects. Power Output The TCG 2032 V16 is a powerhouse, delivering an impressive output range from 3000 to 4500 kWh. This wide range ensures that the engine can cater to a diverse set of requirements, from industrial applications to large-scale power plants. Fuel Versatility one of the standout features of the TCG 2032 V16 is its ability to run on a plethora of gas types, whether it's natural gas, landfill gas, sewage gas, mine gas, or coke oven gas, this engine can handle it all, offering operators flexibility and reducing dependency on a single fuel source. High reliability and low operating costs, reliability is at the heart of the TCG 2032 V16. Its design and construction ensure that it operates consistently, minimizing downtimes and maximizing productivity. Furthermore, its optimized design ensures low operating costs, making it a cost-effective solution in the long run. Fast Ramp Up Option Recognizing the dynamic needs of modern power generation, MWM offers a Fast Ramp Up Option for the TCG 2032 BV16. This feature is especially crucial in today's energy landscape, where intermittent renewable sources like wind and solar are becoming more prevalent. The Fast Ramp Up ensures that the engine can switch from a start request to 100% load on the grid in less than 5 minutes providing a rapid response to power demands. Efficiency and environmental considerations. The TCG 2032 V16 isn't just about raw power, it's about delivering that power efficiently. Features like the optimized chamber spark plug ensure high fuel utilization. While the closed crankcase ventilation boosts efficiency by utilizing blow-by gas, moreover, the engine's design ensures soot-free combustion, reducing environmental impact and maintenance needs. Compact design and easy installation. Despite its power, the TCG 2032 V16 boasts a compact design, ensuring easy transport and installation. Its design considerations mean that it offers up to 30% shorter length compared to some competitors, reducing logistical challenges. The long-range ocean patrol vessel, POLA, Arm Reformador, represents a pinnacle of naval engineering, achieved through international collaboration and state-of-the-art shipbuilding techniques. Here's a concise overview of its construction process. The POLA was envisioned to enable Mexico to safeguard its vast maritime territories, spanning 5 million square kilometers of sea. The vessel's design is rooted in Damon Sigma Frigate 10514, a tried and tested blueprint that has seen multiple iterations. This 107-meter-long ship is the tenth of its lineage, underscoring the enduring partnership between the Royal Netherlands Navy and the Dutch maritime industry. One of the standout features of the POLA's creation was its swift completion. From contract signing to delivery, the entire process took less than three years. This speed was not at the expense of quality, but was a testament to efficient planning and execution. The rapid realization of the POLA was possible due to the seamless collaboration between multiple stakeholders, the Mexican Navy, 
Damon, local and international subcontractors and suppliers worked in tandem to ensure the project's success. Their collective efforts ensured that challenges were swiftly addressed and that the project stayed on track. A significant contributor to the vessel's efficient build was the adoption of modular construction. This method involves prefabricating sections of the ship separately, which are then assembled together. This approach not only accelerates the construction timeline, but also ensures precision and quality control. The construction process was enriched by a smooth transfer of knowledge and technology. This was pivotal for the project's success, ensuring that best practices were shared and implemented. The project drew upon the expertise of around 70 Dutch companies, including industry giants like Thales. Their combined knowledge, coupled with the contributions of local Mexican firms, ensured that the Polo was built to the highest standards. On the crisp morning of October 20th, the majestic MSC Magnifica, stretching nearly 300 meters, sailed into the port of Rotterdam. Her destination was dock number 8 at Damon Ship Repair Rotterdam, one of the largest docks in Western Europe. As soon as safety protocols allowed, the repair work began in earnest. Crews swiftly lowered tools, erected scaffolds, and steel workers geared up for a significant task, replacing a whopping 40 tons of steel. Simultaneously, another team embarked on a monumental painting job. With over 6,000 square meters of hull surface requiring attention, there was no room for delay. The ship's stern also witnessed a flurry of activity. Old rudder systems were dismantled, and the rudder stocks were transported to an on-site workshop. Here, they underwent modifications to seamlessly fit the new rudders. This proximity of facilities was a testament to the yard's efficiency ensuring swift repair operations. While the primary repair tasks were in full swing, another team diligently serviced the lifeboats and their davits. The ship began to transform. Fresh paint made her shine under the sun. Welders expertly fitted new steel plates. And the rudder bearings, after meticulous measurements, were ready for the modified rudder stocks. These bearings were cooled with nitrogen, ensuring a perfect fit into the linkage system. The anchor chains of the MSC Magnifica, integral to the ship's anchoring system, were meticulously inspected for signs of wear, corrosion, or damage. Simultaneously, the ship's stabilizers and thrusters underwent a thorough examination. Stabilizers, akin to underwater wings, counteract the ship's roll, ensuring passenger comfort even in turbulent waters. The thrusters, on the other hand, provide the ship with enhanced maneuverability, especially crucial during docking or navigating tight spaces. Minor repairs to these components were swiftly addressed. As the Magnifica's rejuvenation process approached its culmination, a fresh coat of anti-fouling paint was applied to her hull. This specialized paint serves a dual purpose. Not only does it give the ship a renewed appearance, but it also prevents marine organisms and dirt from adhering to the ship, reducing drag and improving fuel efficiency. Lastly, the ship's propellers, the heart of its propulsion system, were buffed and polished. This process not only restored their luster, but also optimized their hydrodynamic efficiency. Man Prime Serve Hamburg stands as the most significant hub within the Prime Set network. In this part, You Can Do TV will shows you the intricate realm of engine and parts repair and reconditioning. A tour through the workshop reveals the depth of technical expertise available. A foundational step in the process is the grinding of radii, crucial for the optimal crafting of crankshafts. 
Within the facility lies a state-of-the-art machining center dedicated to both repair and reconditioning tasks. Notably, the cooling jacket type 3240 undergoes restoration here. The five-axis machining center, a testament to modern engineering, possesses capabilities for drilling, milling, and turning intricate components, including two-stroke piston crowns and, in certain instances, counterwaves. The expertise also encompasses the complete overhaul and repair of diesel engines. Precision is evident in the assembly of a cylinder block type 5255. The integration of laser welding, characterized by low distortion and precise material disposition, offers an eco-friendly solution that prioritizes the safety of operators. This method proves invaluable for applications requiring localized repairs, A significant segment of operations focuses on the repair and manufacture of service crankshafts. There, journals and crank pins undergo reductions tailored to specific demands, such as the creation of custom cooling pipes. Specialized tools facilitate the rectification of even the most compromised crankshafts without necessitating their removal from the engine. Emphasis on quality assurance is evident, with rigorous crack testing and a range of welding techniques ensuring top-tier results at competitive prices, aligning with customer expectations. This provides an initial glimpse into a large repair task centered on the replacement of a crankshaft. The footage captures the preliminary phase of the repair, which involves the removal of cylinder covers and the elevation of the pistons. Given their weight, handling cylinder covers and pistons poses challenges, especially due to potential swaying during lifting. It's imperative to utilize tools designed for hydraulic nuts with precision, prioritizing the safety of all personnel involved in the operation. The second step of a large repair job involves the removal of liners, which can be quite heavy. It is important to be cautious during this step and take necessary safety precautions to prevent any potential risk of injury. Lifting heavy loads requires proper technique and adequate physical strength, so it is advisable to work in teams to distribute the weight evenly. It is important to avoid any sudden movements or jerks that could cause the liners to fall or shift, potentially causing harm. When it comes to lifting and protecting rank gears during a large repair job, it is essential to handle them with care to avoid any damage or harm to their fragile and sensitive parts. As demonstrated in the video, the recommended approach is to use proper protection around the gear to ensure optimal conditions for lifting and transportation. This protection can include items such as foam padding or sturdy crates to keep the gear secure and prevent any accidental impacts. By taking these precautions, the rank gear can be safely moved without any risk of damage, ensuring that the repair job can be completed effectively and efficiently. In the process of transporting and preparing a new crankshaft for installation in a ship's engine, it is important to keep in mind that the crankshaft is coated in preserving oil at the factory to prevent rusting during storage and transport. However, before installation, it is crucial to remove and clean off the preserving oil, which can be a time-consuming process. 
The crankshaft is one of the heaviest parts of the engine, so special lifting gear will be required to safely lift and install it. When lifting an A-frame as part of a large repair job, it is crucial to use sufficient manpower to ensure that the process is both efficient and safe. Underestimating the number of workers required for the job can lead to potential risks and hazards. Therefore, it is important to prioritize safety by using an adequate number of workers for the task. Lifting a crankshaft can be a challenging task due to its considerable weight. As shown in the video, it is essential to use sufficient manpower and special lifting gear to ensure the safe and efficient lifting of the crankshaft from the bed plate into the transport cradle. It is crucial to take necessary precautions during the lifting process to avoid any potential risks or hazards. Once the crankshaft is lifted, it needs to be transported using a special cradle to ensure that it is moved safely and securely. Are you curious about engine overhauls and crankshaft installations? Watch this video and see how a new crankshaft is transported from the service workshop to the vessel where it is installed and the A-frame mounted. Remember that the main bearing studs are sensitive and must not be damaged during installation of a new crankshaft. Therefore, we recommend protecting the main bearing studs properly and taking care not to damage them. In a large repair job, installing new pistons and liners is a crucial step in restoring the proper function of the engine. As shown in the video, it is important to pay close attention to the O-rings when installing the new pistons. These rings play a critical role in securing the pistons and liners in place and any errors during the installation process can lead to significant problems. Therefore, it is essential to ensure that the O-rings are installed correctly to prevent any potential leaks or malfunctions. This requires careful attention to detail and precise positioning of the rings during installation. By taking the time to install the O-rings correctly, the new pistons and liners can be properly secured, contributing to the overall effectiveness and longevity of the engine. Proper alignment is essential when installing a turbocharger rotor during a large repair job. As demonstrated in the video, it is crucial to take care during the installation process to ensure that the rotor is aligned correctly.
any misalignment can lead to serious issues, including damage to the engine and decreased performance. Therefore, it is crucial to pay close attention to the alignment of the TC rotor during installation to ensure that it is mounted correctly and functions properly. The Tricolor, a car carrier owned by the Norwegian shipping company Will Wilhelmsen and operated by Wellenius Wilhelmsen Logistics, met a tragic fate. The vessel, laden with over 2,800 brand new cars destined for the American market, was struck by the container vessel Kariba, causing it to capsize and sink within half an hour. This event set the stage for one of the most complex and extensive salvage operations in maritime history. The collision with the Kariba caused the tricolor to sink rapidly, coming to rest on its port side at the bottom of the channel. Fortunately, the ship's 24 crew members were able to evacuate in time, avoiding any loss of life. The sunken tricolor posed a significant threat to one of the world's busiest shipping lanes. Additionally, it began leaking bunker oil. The owner's priority was to minimize environmental damage. The Asian Hercules II, a floating shear leg was dispatched to the site to serve as a stable platform for the salvage team. Divers were sent down to inspect the vessel and to initiate the process of removing the oil trapped inside. The tricolor's sinking was not just a logistical challenge but also an environmental concern, primarily due to the vast amount of oil on board. The ship's position, resting on its side, made conventional oil removal methods impractical. To address this, the salvage team had to innovate. Recognizing that the vessel's orientation provided access to the bottom of the oil tanks, they decided to approach the problem from beneath. Using specialized drilling equipment, they punctured the tanks, creating access points. To ensure that the oil could be safely extracted without spilling, valves were meticulously attached to these holes. These valves acted as controlled gateways, allowing the oil to be pumped out systematically. Over an intensive two-month period, the team worked tirelessly, extracting oil and transferring it to separate containment units. Their efforts were commendable, successfully removing the majority of the 2,100 tons of oil on board. However, the tricolor's complex structure meant that some oil reservoirs remained inaccessible. Despite the team's best efforts, a portion of this trapped oil inevitably found its way into the sea, underscoring the challenges and limitations of such salvage operations. Once the immediate environmental threat of the oil was addressed, attention turned to the colossal task of removing the tricolor's wreck. Recognizing the scale and complexity of the operation, the ship's owners sought the expertise of industry leaders, they contracted a consortium that brought together the specialized skills of several companies, Smith Salvage and Multraship from the Netherlands, and Skaldis and Ors from Belgium. This collaboration ensured a blend of experience, resources, and innovative techniques. Given the tricolor's size and the potential risks of lifting such a massive structure intact, a strategic decision was made. The vessel would be segmented. The plan was to cut the tricolor into nine sizable sections, each of which could be managed more safely and efficiently than attempting to salvage the ship as a whole.
the process of segmenting a ship of the tricolor's magnitude was unprecedented. It required precision cutting tools, underwater expertise, and a coordinated effort between the teams above and below the water. Each section, once separated, was then individually lifted and transported for further dismantling and recycling. Two critical phases of this operation were the cutting of the sunken vessel into manageable sections and the subsequent lifting of these sections for transportation and scrapping. Cutting process, setting the stage. To begin the cutting process, two massive work platforms were strategically assembled on either side of the tricolor's submerged wreck. These platforms were not just ordinary structures, they were specially designed to provide stability in the challenging underwater environment and to support the heavy machinery and equipment required for the operation. The special cutting wire. The primary tool for this operation was a unique cutting wire, which had previously proven its efficacy in the salvage of the Russian submarine, Kursk. This wire was not a simple strand, but a sophisticated piece of engineering. It was made up of a series of small cylinders strung over a steel wire. These cylinders were coated with a material known as wedia, a blend of special types of steel that approached the hardness of diamonds. This ensured that the wire could slice through the tricolor steel structure with precision. Maneuvering the wire, to position this cutting wire beneath the tricolor, a flexible drill was employed. This drill was designed to penetrate the seabed, navigate beneath the wreck, and emerge on the other side. Once the drill had created a pathway, a hollow tube was pulled back through, creating a conduit for the cutting wire. The wire was then threaded through this tube, positioning it beneath the vessel and setting the stage for the cutting operation. The cutting operation. With the wire in place, the real challenge began. The wire was pulled taut and then moved back and forth between the two platforms, effectively acting as a saw. This sawing action, powered by large winches on the platforms, methodically sliced the tricolor into nine distinct sections. The precision and effectiveness of this method were evident in the clean cuts achieved, even through the ship's multiple decks and its engine room. The lifting process. Each section of the tricolor presented its unique challenges, the vessel had been cut into nine distinct sections, each varying in weight and structural integrity. The process began with the shear legs being positioned strategically around a section. Multiple cables, attached to the section, were then connected to the shear legs. As the lifting commenced, the first site was often the lifting frames, which had been previously welded to the sections to facilitate the process. These frames were crucial especially given the weakened state of the vessel after months underwater and the cutting process. The lifting was deliberately slow. This was not just to manage the immense weight, but also to allow water trapped within the sections to drain properly. Rapid lifting could have caused a sudden shift in weight, potentially leading to catastrophic consequences. Moreover, the even distribution of weight between the two shear legs was paramount. Any imbalance could strain the equipment and endanger the entire operation.
Challenges and precision. The tricolor's structure had been compromised not only by the sinking, but also by the cutting process and the natural forces it was subjected to while submerged. This meant that each section, while massive, was also fragile. The shear legs, while powerful, had to operate with a surgeon's precision. Divers played a crucial role during this phase. They continuously monitored the sections as they were being lifted, ensuring that the cables were holding and that the sections were not breaking apart. Their feedback, relayed in real time to the surface team, was invaluable in making on-the-spot decisions. Transportation to Zebra Once a section was securely lifted above the water, the next challenge was transportation. A massive barge was maneuvered into position beneath the suspended section. Slowly, with the sheer legs controlling the descent, the section was placed onto the barge. This process, much like the lifting, demanded absolute precision. The barge had to be stabilized to ensure it could bear the weight of the section without tipping. Once the massive sections of the tricolor were securely lifted and placed on barges, they were transported to a specialized facility in Zebra, Belgium. This facility was specifically prepared to handle the scrapping of such a large vessel and its cargo. The scrapping site in Zebra was meticulously prepared to ensure an environmentally responsible dismantling process. The foundation of the site was layered with plastic, topped with metal plates, this setup ensured that any residual oil or contaminants from the tricolor would not seep into the soil, preventing environmental contamination. The process of breaking down the sections of the tricolor was a massive undertaking. Tens of thousands of tons of steel had to be cut, separated, and processed for recycling. Specialized equipment and trained personnel worked diligently to dismantle the vessel, ensuring that every piece was accounted for and processed appropriately. The Tricolor's cargo, consisting of over 2,800 luxury cars, was a tragic sight. These vehicles, once symbols of luxury and engineering prowess, were now mangled and corroded from their time underwater. Each car was carefully extracted, and a strict regime was put in place for their disposal. Manufacturers required a disposal certificate for each vehicle, ensuring that the cars were scrapped responsibly and in compliance with environmental standards. After the primary sections of the tricolor were removed, the salvage team's attention turned to the smaller pieces that had scattered during the sinking and subsequent operations. Using advanced magnetometer and multi-beam systems, the team meticulously scanned the seabed to locate every fragment, no matter how small. Divers were dispatched to retrieve these remnants. Given the vast area to cover and the varied sizes of the debris, this was a time-consuming and challenging task. Cars, parts of the ship, and even smaller metal fragments had to be located and lifted to the surface. The challenge was not just in the retrieval, but also in ensuring that the marine environment was not further disturbed in the process.
the commitment to leaving the seabed as clean as possible was paramount. Every piece retrieved was a step towards fulfilling this commitment. The French and Belgian authorities closely monitored the cleanup process, ensuring that the salvage team adhered to the highest environmental standards.